All right, so last week we got Corsair Report 1, and now 2K has finally released Corsair Report 2. If you saw the report last week, then you know they mainly talked about offense. But this time around, they're mainly talking about defense. You know, they're talking about defense, the new foot planting, new collision system, and all that stuff. So we got quite a bit of stuff to get into, and it should be interesting. And for those of y'all that didn't know, this is Corsair Report 2 out of 3. You know what I'm saying? The next one should be coming out, I want to say, next week. And for next week, I'm not sure what they're going to put out. I mean, I wish it would be Bills, but I mean, they're not going to do that most likely because, you know, they're going to wait till the end to put out Bills and stuff. But um, Bills will tie together the offense from, you know, last week and the defense from this week. So I don't know. Time will tell. But um, anyway, let's go and get into this Corsair Report 2. Starting off with movement and dribble movement, they're saying that they rebuilt the movement from the ground up, which is something that Mike Wayne had been saying from like, you know, ever since I want to say, you know, August or September this past year. Basically, to start off, one of the key things that Mike Wayne was saying is that they retained the signature dribble style that they had from previous 2Ks. But everything after that or besides that was thrown out. You know, he talked about how the locomotion of the movement itself was much improved from, you know, what it was on current gen or, you know, the previous generation at this point. He also stated that the movement is being built on the same engine as the pro state dribble movement. So that way you should have more control over your play. That's, that's basically what this is all about, saying that you have more overall control. You know, you can actually go where you want to go. There's no more unwanted cuts and unwanted turns and all that stuff. So that's basically what he's trying to say. And you would think that that sounds so simple to understand. But like when you really think about it in current gen 2K, whether you were online or offline, when you would move your player, whether on defense or offense, whether online or offline, there would be a slight lag. So it sounds to me that he's saying the movement should be more instantaneous now. You know, no more lag even offline. Because, you know, online you would have input lag and latency lag from the internet, but in offline you would just have input lag. So, no input lag. Looking over at the on-ball defense, they're basically saying, or Mike Wayne is basically saying that not only does the on-ball defense now look more realistic with, you know, the animations and all that stuff, but now it also feels more realistic on the ball because in 2K21 current gen, I would hate so much that when I was guarding a player in the park or trying to guard a player, that is, my player would be sliding all over the place like Shaq. He would feel like Shaq, you know what I'm saying? I will be a six foot three, 192 pound playmaking shot creator who's a point guard. And in fact, I remember talking about this before on a patch because 2K said they fixed this in a patch, you know, with patch 3. 2K be lying. I told y'all they be lying. <laughs> they said they fixed this in patch 3, but now they really fixing it now with next gen. I told y'all they be lying. But anyway, um, your player shouldn't be sliding around on defense anymore when he's trying to guard his matchup. And also your player weight should feel more authentic to, you know, what you're actually making the game or who you're actually controlling the game. So that means if I'm controlling John Wall on defense. He shouldn't be moving like Shaq. You know what I'm saying? That shouldn't happen no more. And regarding defense, Mike Wayne said they also added new defensive animations to, you know, match up with who your player is or, you know, the player size and all that, like I was saying earlier with what I just said. So that's cool to hear. So that's something I've been talking about and complaining about for so long. So I don't know, like I said, 2K be lying. So when 2K21 next gen come out, we're going to see if this defense is actually improved or not. So time will tell. Foot planning is basically similar to what I said about, you know, sliding with defense, but um, Mike Wayne said that now players can take more procedural footsteps and, then, you know, take more better footsteps even when they, you know, taking like subtle steps when they like not moving that much on defense and all that stuff or on offense when they just, you know, standing out idle waiting for the ball. But when it comes to foot planning, the only thing I want to see is Kyrie Irving because Kyrie Irving's footwork is some of the best footwork in the entire NBA. You know what I'm saying? Not only is Kyrie known for having the best handles in NBA history, but he also got some of the best footwork. So... I want to see, you know, when you have players like Kyrie Irving or when you create a player like Kyrie Irving, is he going to have the footwork, you know, be able to stop on a dime and, you know, do those little, you know, crazy dribble moves we've seen him do over the years, you know, in the real NBA and 2K21 next gen, because like I said, Kyrie Irving footwork is crazy. So when it comes to footwork in 2K21 next gen, is 2K going to actually be able to implement that the right way? You know what I'm saying? Because Kyrie Irving is not an easy player to get right with that. So, I mean, I want to see that. More importantly, my real question is, is 2K going to be able to implement that the right way for our, my players if we equip those styles for like, you know, Kyrie Irving dribble style for our my player because most of us care about my career and you know our my player and parking stuff more than playing with Kyrie Irving in the game so that's all I really want to know but body else Mike when you're saying something similar to what he said about defense where you know bigger players you know being able to move how they're supposed to move he's saying the bigger players with body ups shouldn't be able to get a lot of blow bys like how smaller players will and how smaller players will get more like crab dribbles and all that stuff to get around their player or your defensive matchup or whatever you want to call it. Mike also stated that you can't, you know, just put your head down and just, you know, use your speed to your advantage to get past your defender. You got to actually have skill and, you know, actually know what you're doing to get past your opponent this time around instead of just, you know, relying on just blow bys, you know, just off the rip. So from body ups, what I can get from what I read from this article is that blow by animations should still be in the game, 
but there should be more fear because in 2k18 we all hated blue bots because they were overpowered in 2k20 you can never get blue bots at all like that so i'm guessing they mean that you know this is more of a realistic way of you know getting by your player or bumping your player and all that stuff because like i said blue bots they could never get right in the past with 2k20 or in 2k18 so i want to see how they do it with you know 2k21 next gen for off ball think of no blue bots but on defense you know what I'm saying if that makes sense Mike Wayne is basically saying that now there's more freedom when you're working away from the ball, but when you're closer to it, you know, the contact is what it should be. And to just summarize the most important thing, the most important thing I got from this was there are no more vacuum screens. So this is big because of the fact that when you're in the park on next gen or whatever it's going to be called, that curry behind the back shouldn't really work with the screens anymore because, you know, a lot of times if you play current gen park, you already know that a lot of players just use the curry behind the back and get their teammates to set them screens and get sucked into them. So that's huge. Wait, so if that's the case, I'm wondering how slippery off ball and picked out is going to work. Then again, they might not be in the game because it's next gen. Most likely they won't. So I don't know. Time will tell. If what Mike Wang is saying is true, that means that now you don't get sucked into animations with the screens no more when you shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? He's still saying that you're going to get, you know, hit with screens if he's got a smaller player that can't, you know, defend off the screen. But it should be more realistic with the logic now. Basically, all you need to know for this is that Mike Wayne said that for 2K21 next gen, they developed a new in-air contact shot system that they called the Impact Engine. So basically what that means is now when you're in the air, you shouldn't get sucked into, you know, animations just to, you know, make the game more balanced. So when you're going up with a big man, your big man should actually go up and be able to score because this is real big for me because for the longest in almost all the 2Ks I can remember from when I was a kid, all the way back to like 2K6, if you went up in the lane, and I don't know why, a lot of you park players don't realize this. When you go up contested and current gen in the park, if you're going up contested against a bigger player, even with max badges with like finishing and all that, you're still not going to make the shot because the shot contest system was broken in 2K current gen for the longest. I, like, I don't understand why y'all park players go up against bigger players and expect to make y'all shots. And I would especially see this from old heads in their 30s in the Jordan Wreck. They would get the rebound, go up contested against a player that's bigger, like they'll have a small forward or a power forward. Going up against a center that's like twice their size almost, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, point guard, passing the ball, I'm going to dunk it. Hey, yo, point guard, I'm going to go up, just passing the ball, I'm going to go straight up. Why? <laughs> like, for what? The, the contested layup system had been broken in 2K for the longest with current gen. So Mike Wayne is saying that now for next gen it should be fixed. Also, the alley-oop system has been revamped now so you can catch alley-oops with contact, which is cool, which in all honesty, I don't really care like that, but I mean, that's cool that they added that in for next gen. Also, the charging system should be more realistic now so that now all y'all weirdos and play now online can't just draw charging fouls for no reason and all y'all weirdos in the Jordan Red can't just draw charges to get the ball back, you know what I'm saying, being cheap and all that stuff. So, I want to see how that works for next gen. Hopefully, it works how it should, not like how Mike Wayne's describing it. So, that's a cool addition they added in. This is something exclusive to PS5. Some of the Xbox don't have them playing. Um, <laughs> they now have the PS5 trigger effect, which means that when your player gets more tired, you'll feel more resistance on the you know right trigger and the left trigger with your fatigue system. So now, you know, the more tired your player is, I guess the harder it's going to be to, you know, hold down L2 or R2, I'm guessing, whatever the speed or whatever the sprint button is, I'm guessing. I don't really know that really worries. I'm about to read more into it. But um, it sounds cool from what I've, you know, read from it so far. But um, like I said, what I think is, you know, when you're more tired, it's going to be harder to hold down on R2. So I want to I see how that's going to work. But um, that sounds cool. And last, but probably actually least, <laughs> haptic feedback, which is probably the most least important thing out of this whole article. They're saying that now, going back to the collision system, when you collide with players and all that stuff now, that when you know run into players and stuff, then depending on how big or strong they are will determine how much your controller vibrates when you run into them. Like I said, it's completely irrelevant to me. But I mean, some people might like that. I don't know. But um, I guess we're going to see how that works. Time will tell. All right, that's everything for Courtside Report 2. In all, some of the stuff was of note. A lot of it wasn't, in my opinion, to be honest. For me, my favorite thing they talked about was not getting vacuumed in the screens anymore. So I want to see how that works. But um, y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think down below. What change y'all most excited for? Let me know that. But anyway, that's going to do it for the video. It's been with Andre, and I appreciate y'all for watching. Subscribe if you're brand new and uh, like the video. So um, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. And until next time, I'm out. Thanks for watching. Peace.